Hi folks, um, today's job on my Royal Enfield Classic 350 is fitting the new crash bars that I bought. Um, I got them direct from MotoGP and they only took a few days to arrive so I'm going to show you around the crash bars, the bits and bobs and the tools required to do the job. So we'll do that just now. So you've got your main crash bars and they bolt on at the engine mount at the bottom and then there's this bracketry at the top that holds them together and so the bottom bolt um, it replaces the standard engine bolt because it's a bit longer and it uses a, a 13 millimeter head on this one whereas the standard bolt uses a 14 um, at this end it's a 17 also at this end there's a washer which goes on the inside and then there's another one that goes on the outside before the nut goes on at this end there's a washer that goes to the inside and there's also a small washer that's on the original engine bolt that you need to reuse on here. Up here, you've got the main bit E, the main join and bracket with the Royal Enfield logo, and it's held onto the bike with these two bolts here, these ones. Um, there's also this other bracket that has to be mounted um, it's got lugs on either end so you have to make sure that these lugs are facing down the way and the flat side is facing out these are held on with the two longer cap screws there's two long ones and there's four short ones so they're quite easy to see the difference, so don't get them mixed up. The small cap screws have got their corresponding washers, and they go through the bracket. They hold this bracket on to the connecting bar, and they also hold the, the tubes on to the connecting bar. Right, so the rest of the tools, that's the ones you're going to need for the main engine bolt. 13, 14, 13, and 17. The bolts that hold the bracket on, these are 13, but the original bolt that holds the clutch cable bracket is a 12. So you'll need both a 12mm spanner and a 13mm spanner for the nuts at the back show you that bracket just now it's in uh, there and it holds the the clutch cable in place so that needs to come off and be replaced with other bolts so first things first I'm going to do a wee bit of pre-assembly I'm going to put this together and then I'll join that bracket to the two bars So what I've done is I've got the two longer um, cap screws already in the bracket, so I'm just going to tighten them down. That breeze is picking up like a cloud coming. It might rain. Ah, well. It was sunny when I started. <laughs> Always is. So what you need for this, I forgot to mention, is a number four Allen key to bolt these in tight. It's in. It's in. 
and I'm just going to use the ratchet to tighten it up a bit. Eh? Make sure they're nice and smug. Smug. Snug. So that's those on. Um, that's the bracket on with the flat side facing out the way. So I'm now going to go and get the tubes and they'll bolt on through there and through the bottom as well. <coughs> Definitely get spits of rain. <laughs> Big <Big-nab> it. <laughs> there we go. So this obviously mounts with the Royal Enfield logo facing out the way, so don't get the bars on the wrong ends. So the big lug goes to the rear of the bike, so that will be that one, there, another one will go on the other side. Um, the thing with these is there's a little bit of movement in them, um, there's room to adjust the screws, but what you do is you just shove it as far in as you can and bolt it on. So you get one of the shorter screws. Put the washer on, get that one started, and then another one of the short cap screws, these are stainless steel by the way, they're certainly fairly decent, and that'll go in the bottom there. So again, you want to get these started and then tighten them up. And the reason you want to push the bars in as close as you can is because these lugs stick out a bit, you've got to sort of force the bars together to get the engine bolt through. So I'll get that in and I'll get them tightened up. And I'm going to get soap pile doing so. God damn it. That's that one. One. And again, I'll just snug them up with the, the ratchet. There's one. And two. So I'm going to repeat the process with this other bar. So again, that slides on. If you do put this bracket on, the wrong way round, with the lugs pointing out the way, you won't be able to slip the bars on, so it's fairly easy to work out if you've gone wrong. Right. Where's my wee screws? There we go. Got one. Just try to keep it all level while you're trying to get the screws on. Or bolts, whatever you want to call them. Some people call them screws, some people call them bolts. That is raining properly now. So what I think I'll do is I'm going to finish bolting this together and then start the job again later on. that down, it'll be a bit easier to get it in. Hello! <laughs> Hello! Watch. That's my son and my grandson's darling and my granddaughter Mary. Oh, no, not that over darling. Thank you. Are they freezing? Watch that wire. Cheers, bud. And you go. Hey, boy. Hello. Is that you your doing? BMX bike? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm putting crash bars on my bike. No, but why is there a camera there? Because I'm filming it. Oh. To show people how you do it. Uh, I don't know about that, but my tube. I'll go with the tube bit.
<laughs> oh well, I'll be playing with the grandkids just shortly. You ever notice that with kids, they just open doors, don't close them again. Too much hard work. God damn this thing. Try and get a better, better hold of it. See what I'm doing. So that rave's easing off a bit. I should have done this in the first place. Right. I'll just get these snubbed up. And again, sort of push it in as tight as you can. How's you? So that's the crash bars assembled with the bracket ray on the back and then it's going to go onto the bike in here like so. But first of all, I'm going to go see my family and hopefully it stops raining by the time I come back out. That's the rain on again. I'm nearly finished so I'm just going to persevere and get it done. So the camera kept blowing over while I was putting the bars in place, putting the en bottom engine bolt in. So it kept blowing over in the wind. So I'll just show you what I've done. The V washer is in this side. The bigger washers over there. And that's the new bolt. That's a 13 millimeter. Yeah. Yeah. It's 13 instead of 14 in the original, but the nut on this side is still a 17. So, uh, right, can I show you this? That's it. There's a, a washer either side of the, the lug on the crash bars. Now, there's room to move them in and out so what I'm going to do is push them in quite close to the bike and then tighten the bolts up a bit and then see how it looks and then I'll get on with mounting the top which goes in to these two holes so that bracket there bolts through into there at the top yeah, so I'll just um, I'll just go on with tightening that bolt, bolt then out, try and get it done before the rain comes on any worse. Right, so what I've done is I've put these two nuts and bolts in and got them started a wee bit. Uh, there's no washers with these ones. Because um, the nuts and the bolts are flanged anyway, so like built in washers. Um, i done that off camera because they're really fiddly at the back and uh, you don't really need to be watching me giving it some weapons grade swear words for five minutes or so. So I'm just going to get the, the spanner seated first. Job's fairly easy. Um, that's that tight. It's obvious how the bracket goes together because if you put that little plate in the wrong way round, um, the tubes won't go on. I just have to make sure everything's tight. Um, so these are the 13s. The one that held the, the wee bracket thing on, the clutch cable bracket, that was a 12, these are 13s. Um, yeah, so it's a sort of basic selection of tools there, you don't really need that many. That's it all on nice and tight, let's have a wee look at it. Ah. Da -da -da -da. 
there. So, I know it's skeptical about buying the crash bars in the first place because a lot of the pictures made them look really wide and ungainly. But once they're actually on the bike, they're not bad at all. They're not bad at all. They're not too wide. Um, yeah, I'll put the camera down and I'll sit in the bike and you'll be able to see that they're not really wider than my legs. outside your leg. So they're not bad at all. So I was just saying there that the they're about parallel with outside your legs. So they're not that wide. I'll give you some idea. Um down to the the handlebars. They're just a tad narrower than the handlebars as well. Yeah, they're just that little bit tighter in than the handlebars. Very tight. On this side. So they're fine. They definitely do the job, because like I say, I managed to drop every bike on its side. Because one time I was jacking up um, the old phaser and it fell off the jack onto the grass there. And another time, like I said, I had the, the bike shed thing, the bike barn over in this corner and the wind sent it flying. And it damaged the handlebars and everything. So that's all tightened up. Crash bars are push back as far as they'll go. So, if the weather clears up a wee bit here, I'll go for a run. But it's not looking likely. More rain. So, yeah. That's that. So, thanks for watching. Um, if you made it this far, you're a saint. <laughs> but the patient's a saint. So, yeah, I'll report back once I've been out for a run. See you all later. Thanks again. Bye.